The last Bible study that we did on the rise of the Antichrist ended with a bit of a discussion on the Great Reset, and in it we mentioned that we would come back to that topic in a later lesson. So today we're going to look at it both from a secular and a biblical perspective because there are things that are happening right now in the world around us that are just brick and mortar truth that we see manifesting. But as everything is, it's very rooted in what was prophesied in the book of Revelations. So what is the Great Reset according to those who themselves are orchestrating this agenda that they desire to have enacted by the year 2030? Well, if you go to the World Economic Forum and look at their own promotional material on it, their catchphrase is, you'll own nothing and be happy. When in reality, you'll own nothing and be miserable, but they'll be happy. So what are the premises of this new world system that they are in the works now of implementing? Well, for one, there will be no private property, no privacy. Everything will be surveilled. Everything will be controlled. And some might say, well, what's wrong with everything being surveilled if you're not doing anything wrong? Well, the problem with that is who decides what is right and what is wrong? It's them. And they can change it in a moment. And as we have already seen, proven, they don't hold themselves to their own rules. They don't do what they demand that you do. One of the major aspects of this new system that is right now being implemented is that they intend to use AI a lot as kind of this new deity that will tell everybody what to do and what to think. And there will be this idea that is taught that it is something evolved and intelligent and so far beyond us that we just have to accept what it is giving us. When the truth is that the AI itself is being controlled because there are specific people with specific agendas and I would add even that are led by specific spirits mentioned in the scriptures that are inputting the data. And when you really get down to the root of it, when you look at the people who have been promoting, pushing, and implementing this agenda for generations, all of them have proven to have a very dark side or even outright openly worship Satan. And you can see the fruit of it through their actions and their agendas. Because everything that they do ultimately in the end leads them to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And this is what is trying to rule the world at this current time. They intend to use the ESG system to control who and what can be part of the economic system. This ESG system has already proven to be very evil and very demonic if you don't know what that is. It's very much like China's social credit score, where a business or a person is not rated by their work ethic or their demand or their ability to produce a good service or product. It's ranked by how well they submit or endorse the agenda of the people at the top of this pyramid. So for example, if you do not promote abortion, gender ideology, a hatred of Christians or Israel, if you have any opposition to any of their politicians or leaders, if you do anything that they don't like at all, then they lower your score so that you can't be part of the economic system. You can't buy, sell, or trade, or get a loan, or have a job, or run a business. That's why we have seen in the last several years all of this madness pushing all of these satanic agendas that are so destructive because the businesses had no choice because they've already been brought into this ESG system. But thank God at least the people have been rising up against it to this point. But something will happen according to scripture that will shift things practically in an instant. But first, let's continue on what the Great Reset is according to the own documents, writings, and boastings of the people who are implementing it. It will be a global government. Some of its key features are a global digital ID system, a global digital currency, 
And make no mistake about it, the reason for that is so that they can control you entirely. When they say that you will own nothing and be happy, what they're really saying is you're going to be a slave because somebody has to own it. And who's going to own it? The state. Or in other words, them. The ones at the top of the pyramid. And everyone else will be their sirs. They will have no private property. They will own nothing. They will be able to do nothing but work continually. You can already see this being implemented in the fact that you have to have a hundred subscriptions for things that 10 years ago you paid for once and you owned it. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is the truth. This is the facts. You've got to start reading what is really happening. Because it is lining up perfectly with what was prophesied in the book of Revelations. Because basically, this new economic system means that you will have to give total allegiance to and basically worship this system. Because if you do anything that they deem to be in opposition to it, you can't buy, sell, or trade or be part of it. Which means you can't exist because they will own and control and surveil everything. If you question, if you preach the truth that is in the scriptures, if you speak anything against them politically or even logically, because we know we've seen these agendas, the things that they're pushing, they make no sense. And if you just try to speak facts, you get fact-checked by the orbiters of deception claiming to be the opposite of their function. You see them training up a whole generation to be the tattletale squad, canceling people for not going along with sin. Right now they call it getting canceled. When you get fired or shadow banned or kicked off of social media or the internet, because you spoke an unpopular opinion or you preached the words of Jesus. But in the days and months and years to come, you're going to get shut out from being able to function in society at all. And eventually it's going to come to people's heads being cut off. Because that's what it says in the book of Revelations. And it wasn't just John the Revelator that said it repeating the words of Jesus. But Jesus himself warned us of these things in the scripture. How could these warnings being written by a man sitting in a cave on an island 2,000 years ago with a quill and a paper and a candle, how could he possibly imagine and write down that there would come a day when there would be a global government with a global economic system that would be cashless, that no man might be able to buy, sell, or trade except that they were part of it, and that if they accepted it, they would forfeit their salvation, their place in heaven, because that it would force them to be in alignment and in agreement with ideologies and teachings that are contrary to Jesus, to God, to the word, to truth. My friend, the truth matters. And there is one truth that is not subjective. It is the truth, the way, and the life. It is what was spoken by Jesus Christ. It's what he suffered and died to release to us, and no one can change it. You can only choose to surrender to it or resist it and be judged when he comes back in the end to take this system down. Because it won't last very long, believe me, my friend. It's going to come hard against the Christians, no doubt. But God's going to come even harder against it. And you're not going to want to be found on the wrong side of that fight when it happens. Another reason that they want this digital currency is because it will be completely trackable. So that they can know exactly what you do, what you think, what you spend your money on, where you are. So broken down to its simplest form, the Great Reset is a complete dismantling of the current world system, political, military, religious, and economic, and its replacement with a technocratic global dictatorship. It's the Antichrist, Mark of the Beast system. Again, how did this man who didn't even know what technology was, sit in a cave and prophesy that people would be made to worship the image of the beast. Not the man himself. Simply what you see on a screen. 
you think this can't happen. You don't think this is happening. You need to go and do the research. This is already set in motion. Look at what they did in Canada with the truckers protest. When they were protesting, the government came and froze all of their assets, their bank accounts, and not them only, but anyone who was donating to them to help them in their cause, in their protest. These people who were peacefully exercising their rights had their bank accounts frozen and their livelihoods stolen simply for speaking something that was in opposition to the decisions of the political leadership. In years past, when politicians talked about this brave new world that was coming, they often called it the new world order. That began to catch too much attention, so the verb had shifted, and they now call it the Great Reset. But the truth is this, is that the devil is just so jealous of Jesus that he always tries to counterfeit him, that old anti-Christ spirit. Because there is a new world coming. There is a great reset. Things are going to change. This world is not going to be the same. The scripture prophesies it. Yes, there will be a new world. Yes, there will be a new order. The Bible says that Jesus is coming back with new Jerusalem and that he will rule and reign the nations for a thousand years. But the devil, he's trying to get a jump on this thing and set his kingdom up in advance of it. So great is his pride and arrogance. So when they call it a new world order, it's because they do know a new world is coming, but they're trying to set up their order to control it. In the not so distant future, in a very short time from now, the world is going to be just as different as the world after the flood of Noah was to the world before it. And those who know what is coming want to rule this new world with their own order. And the crazy thing is this, the world has reset before according to the scriptures. And these same powers and principalities have used other world leaders to try to take over it in the past when it reset as well, but they failed, yet their pride makes them keep trying. This is why you have the story of the Tower of Babel not long after the flood of Noah. In fact, Nimrod, who was the one who ordered the construction of the Tower of Babel, is the first archetype for the Antichrist. In fact, he's the first one who set up a governmental system that caused the people to become dependent on him instead of God. The people were not being obedient to the mandates of God. They were being obedient to a man who was giving them instructions that were in contradiction to what God had spoken. He set himself up to be worshipped in the place of God. When it says that he built a tower to heaven, it's not like the little Sunday school message that implies that he wanted to be where God was. What it really means is that he set himself up an elevated pulpit so that people would worship him in the position of God. And that's what the Antichrist will do. And that's what this system is being set up to force you to come into agreement with. But the Bible is very clear that if you do not resist, you forfeit your place in God's kingdom. And some will have to resist with their very lives because the Bible says that it will become such a terrible dictatorship that many will be beheaded and lose their lives for refusing to be part of this new global cashless economic system. When you really do the research and you get into it, you see that a major leg of this new economic system is going to be based around climate change. It's part of the way that they're going to control people and strike fear within them. And one of the reasons for that is because what is coming is the same thing that happened in the time of Noah. The Bible says that God will not pour wrath upon the righteous, but that the wages of sin is death. There is a law set in motion, and God in his mercy is always calling us to repentance so he can stay that judgment because he doesn't want us to have to face it, but eventually it will come. But as long as people are preaching the truth and people are receiving the truth and people are getting saved and cleansed and changed and walking in right standing with God, then they become the salt that preserves the land and pushes back the 
tide of judgment. But when people stand in rebellion and pride and opposition and come into agreement with things that are demonic and are against God's teachings and commandments, then you set the clock back in motion and the devil comes to collect. He says, hey, look, the wages of sin, they earn this. And when there's not enough righteousness left to preserve the land, then judgment has to fall on it. Just like in the time of Abraham, whenever he said, would you not spare Sodom and Gomorrah if there were 50 righteous? And God said, yes. And then he kept saying 20 righteous. Yes, 30 righteous. He got down to the fact of the matter that there just wasn't enough righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah to justify continuing to allow the wickedness and the sin and the suffering and the rebellion and the destruction of the souls of the people that were being born into it and just going right into damnation because they were so polluted and corrupted. And so judgment had to fall on it, not only for its sin, but it says in the New Testament as an example to those who would after choose to live ungodly. In other words, to us right now, because in the end, when the wrath of God falls upon the entire world, the whole world will be like Sodom and Gomorrah, raining hell, fire, and brimstone. There is something coming that will be astrological, that will be geological, that will change the world forever. And it's the same thing that caused the flood of Noah in the past past. Only the Bible says that he won't allow the whole world to be destroyed by a flood again. This time it will be by fire. So whatever caused all the fountains of the deep to be broken open and all of the major destructions that changed the whole world in the time of Noah, it's going to happen again. And the book of Revelations describes things like great mountains falling into the sea, the stars falling from heaven, great earthquakes and upheavals storms, the seas raging, wars and perplexities of nations. There is something coming and they know exactly what it is and they are all jockeying in position because they know that everything is going to collapse and they want to come out on top on the other side of it. So while all this is happening, because that righteousness is being removed from the earth more and more, they're going to try to tell you that it is global warming or climate change or it's the human's fault. But they'll never tell you that it's because of sin and that the only way to stop it is to repent. But there will be at least two preaching it, the two witnesses. That the Bible says we'll be preaching and prophesying from Jerusalem, warning until the very last whenever they finally kill them. And then leave their bodies for three days in the streets, but God resurrects them. The reality of what's coming is far greater than any Hollywood movie could ever depict. And the truth is, is that we are seeing it manifested right now. Because in order for this thing to happen, the current world system has to collapse. They're going to make you desperate. In fact, they brag that they'll make you ask for it. When the economic systems that you know have failed, when there's no more food and they've starved you out for a while, when there are plagues and pestilences, the Bible clearly says that the Antichrist will kill by these things, by famine, by the sword, by war, by pestilence, by the beast of the earth. Everything is falling into place. So don't be deceived when they try to sell you this thing with sugar and sprinkles and claiming to be your savior. You'll own nothing, but you won't be happy. In fact, if you choose to partake in this, you'll never be happy again. Because in the end, you'll suffer eternal damnation. They plan to use the celestial and geological upheavals that are coming, that are actually part of of the end of this dispensation to get you to join their system they will claim to be able to save you from it yes there will be plagues there will be massive earthquakes there will be mountains falling into the sea famines and wars in diverse places and they will claim to be your saviors they'll give you the food that you need the medicine they'll even give you a place of protection they will claim to be able to save you from what's happening. But you'll have to be part of their system. You'll have to take the mark of the beast. You'll have to forfeit your soul. 
and give them your allegiance. But in the end, when the fires come, and the Bible says that men's hearts will fail them in fear for what they see coming upon the earth, and the whole world begins to burn like Sodom and Gomorrah, then those who chose to put their faith in God and say as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did to King Nebuchadnezzar, that we don't even have to think about our answer. We will not bow the knee to anyone but our God. And he is able to deliver us out of the hands of any man, but even if he doesn't, still will we not bow to this system. That's what those three Hebrew kids said. And you know what happened? They were thrown into a fiery furnace. But it didn't hurt them. So in the end, when the fires are falling upon the earth and everything is burning and you're not allowed into their bunkers and into their man-made arcs, these things that they have designed to try to out-engineer the very wrath of God that the Bible says will not help them, that they will literally cry for the mountains to fall on them out of fear for what they see coming upon the earth. Yet the saints, the believers, the men and women of God, it says, will be heard singing in the fires and will not be hurt. They're going to be just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, this might seem a little far-fetched until you do a little research and see that the world leaders really do believe this is coming. They know things, and they're putting their money and their resources towards it. In fact, the prince of Saudi Arabia has begun the construction of a major city miles and miles long that he calls the line. Most of it will be underground, and he plans to have it finished by 2030. Many of you have heard of the seed ark where they store all of the seeds on the earth up in Switzerland. All over the world, the richest people and the elites have built their underground bunkers. They know that this is coming and they're going to use it to their advantage. And only those who know the scripture will see through their great deceptions. The Bible talks about eight world empires that rule the earth until the return of Christ. We are currently in the seventh. When the seventh falls, it falls suddenly. And out of the destruction that it brings, the upheaval, it says that very quickly the eighth rises up because in actuality it's already been set up. They just need a problem to create the reaction of panic that will allow them to offer the solution that will make the people Accept it. So when the seventh falls, which is the one we're in now, there is an empire that has ruled the world for the last several hundred years. It is very familiar to most of the people who will be hearing this message. You have lived in it. But it will fall. It will collapse very suddenly. And out of it will rise the eighth. This shift, this transition is where we are at now prophetically. That's why you see all these crazy things happening in the economy, in the world, in wars, in the politicians. So you better get ready because when the eighth rises, that is the one that the Antichrist comes out of, but he only rules for a very short time. And then Jesus comes back and fights against him and all those who were in allegiance with him. You better know the scriptures because you're living them. I think it's significant that it is the Eighth World Empire that the Antichrist comes out of, again, knowing that he always tries to counterfeit our Jesus. Because in biblical numerology, eight is the number of new beginnings. There were six days of creation, and on the seventh day, God rested. Therefore, the eighth day would be the same as the first day of the next week. It is a new beginning. It's something new that is starting. The Bible makes mention that with God, a thousand years is as a day, and a day is as a thousand years. Now, we know that's not a literal translation. That is hyperbial to make the point that God's time is not our time. Something that we think should take a short time can take a long time with God, or something we think should take a long time can be done very quickly with God. But nevertheless, there is a parallel, a similitude, a type and shadow in the six days of creation that plays out in all of the dispensations of the earth. And that is this, that from creation 
unto the present day has been 6,000 years. And if a thousand years is as a day, then that equates to six days. And on the seventh day, God rested. So we know that Jesus is coming back very soon with new Jerusalem. And so the next thousand years, which would be the next day, will be our Sabbath day, our seventh day, that day of rest when Jesus rules and reigns. And we spend that thousand years with him in new Jerusalem. But the Bible tells us that something else happens after that thousand year reign. Something does come next. The eighth day, a new beginning. There is a final battle then, and it is so bad that the earth is destroyed and God creates a new heaven and a new earth. And so in this, we see again the enemy counterfeiting this eighth world empire that they want to be their new beginning, their great reset. It's not going to last them. They've been deceived by their own pride and arrogance. Even Hitler claimed that he would rule and reign for a thousand years. That's what his Reich meant. But in actuality, it was just a demon speaking through him that was jealous of Jesus and trying to counterfeit his prophesied ruleship. The Antichrist, who is possessed by Satan as well, will try to do the same, but on a global scale. So if you want to get a picture in your head of what this great reset will actually look like, think a global Nazi Germany. Only empowered by current technology. So yes, the markets are falling. Yes, the world is falling apart. Yes, things are shifting. Yes, the seventh world empire is ending. And a new thing is starting. And many of your world leaders know exactly what is happening. Even if they claim to be on your side. When they repeatedly say things that seem to make no sense. Like the quote we've all heard. Quote, what can be unburdened by what has been. Sounds like nonsense, yeah? No. That's a spirit boasting. What it's really saying is that what can be their eighth empire, unburdened by what has been the seventh one that they are destroying, unburdened to them, because the burden will be transferred entirely to creation, to the remnant, to the Christian, to the average citizen. Make no mistake about it. You're going to be a slave in Egypt all over again. You will own nothing, and you will have to pretend that you are happy with it. So we're going to pray about this as we come to an end to this message. But before we do, I want to ponder this question. This, of course, is not something that we can know to the specifics, but it is an interesting thought to chew on for a moment. Why does this all have to be done by 2030? Why do they want this in motion by then? Well, if we go back to our 6,000 years since creation, now we know that dates shift and change and we're not dealing with exacts here, but let's just chew on this because God does do things to help us to get an idea. We may not know the day or the hour, but we can know the times and the seasons. So let's just assume maybe that since we're 6,000 years from creation, that somewhere around the year 2000, maybe the Antichrist was born. We do know that when Jesus turned 30 years old, he began his earthly ministry. And then he ministered on earth for three and a half years. 30 years after 2000 will be 2030. And we do know this for sure, according to scripture, that the Antichrist's reign only lasts for three and a half years. He is an anti-Christ. He will parallel Christ. He counterfeits Christ. So we don't know that the Antichrist will come on the scene exactly in 2030, but it is an interesting thing to ponder. Nevertheless, when he does show himself and we know for sure who he is, we know that there are three and a half years left. And they will be a terrible three and a half years for sure. Because he will be the opposite of everything that Jesus was. And men will worship him. 
because he will give them what they want or what they think they want. Now again, those are just thoughts and ponderings, things to chew on and put in the back of our minds just in case they happen. But what we do know for sure is this, that for a while it will seem like this Antichrist, this global dictator who will lead this world system, for a season it will seem like he's winning. The scripture literally says that he will prevail to overcome the holy people until God steps in and Jesus defeats him at the Battle of Armageddon and then sets up his kingdom and rules himself from New Jerusalem. And then we'll have the real new world that these prideful men and women are trying to steal from him. But they can't. So here is the patience of the saints. Understand the scriptures. Because everything that's happening has been written. And understanding them can give you confidence in the midst of what's coming. But no matter what happens, what resistance comes against you, no matter how hard it gets or what persecution, keep believing in Jesus, in his words, in his teachings. Keep waiting for his returning. Keep praying. Keep loving. Keep trying to save the lost. Tell everybody that you can to get ready for Jesus' return because it is coming quicker than you could ever imagine. And even if he chose to tarry for a little bit longer, it still would not be that much because we are already at the end of this dispensation. Things are going to change whether we're ready for it or not. So what you have to do right now is trust in the word of God. Pray, repent, get into right standing, build your relationship with the Holy Spirit so he can lead, guide, and direct you through what is coming. You're going to need boldness. You're going to need confidence. You're going to need grace in abundance. You're going to need to be strong and do great exploits. You're going to need to know your God so that you don't fall to deceptions because they're going to be great. They're going to be so real. They're going to be so technocratic and it's going to be hard to resist them. There are going to be scary things happening in the earth and in the heavens, things that they know are coming and they're going to use to their advantage. If you don't know the truth about what's been written, in the scriptures. So Father, we ask you to give us wisdom today. We ask you to help us to understand what's in the scriptures. We ask you to speak to us and to teach us and to lead us to the right teachers and teachings that can help us to understand what has been written. Help us to take this serious and not just fall into this system that's meant to enslave and destroy the souls of men. We don't want to be slaves in Egypt. If we got to follow you out into the wilderness while you send judgment and plagues upon it, let your will be done. You've done it before. You'll do it again. You'll take care of your remnant. You'll tell us what to do, where to go. You'll empower us. And when the fullness of time has come, you'll come back for us. Oh, may we be found still full of faith, waiting and anticipating your return and deliverance. May we be a bride dressed in white with our lamps trimmed, being a light in the darkness, ready to meet you when the trumpet sounds and calls us to the marriage supper of the Lamb, that we might rule and reign with you a thousand years in New Jerusalem. Oh, it seems so far-fetched to the human mind, but how can we doubt it when we see everything prophesied about it coming to fruition right now? Thank you for joining us today. This program was brought to you by HOWC Media Ministries. For more messages like this or information about our ministry, please visit us online at heartofworshipchurch.com.